students, this video is the second lesson in Unit 6, which is Linear Applications. Uh, the lesson for today is real-world slope. I'm going to be showing you slope in a couple of different contexts, including on a graph, like you see on the left-hand side here, and on a table, which you see on the right-hand side. In both cases, we're going to be trying to find the slope, which, as you know, is the rate of change uh, or the rise over run between uh, two points in a linear function. And you're going to have to look at these situations, a graph and a table, and identify what the slope is for those situations. Taking a look at the learning target, we're going to be determining the rate of change from various examples. Of course, you're looking at examples such as, uh, such as graphs and tables. And also keep in mind that the rate of change is otherwise known as the slope. Okay, so for the do now, you're supposed to fill out the following table and then find the rate of change between the two points. Try to fill these out first. Uh, so pause the video, try this one out, and then come back to see if you get it right. So you should know that rate of change is also known as the slope or the pattern or the rise over run. Uh, the rate of change tells you how the uh, pattern or the linear function is changing over time. Um, if it's a positive number, it means it's increasing over time. And if it's a negative number, well, it means it's decreasing over time. The formula for finding rate of change, the slope formula, looks like this. The formula for finding is, of course, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. You can also use rise over run, which we will be using when we look at graphs. But you can always use y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, even if you're looking at the graph, just by identifying the points on the graph. Uh, what else? Oh, the answer must include. Uh, we're looking for units and context here. Units meaning I can't give an answer of four. I have to say, you know, four miles per hour or four, uh, you know, um, dollars per minute. Um, context as well. So you're writing down a sentence for what the question is asking for. If the question is asking what's the rate of change of this, you know, population of penguins uh, from, from 1998 to 2004, you would say the context of, well, the rate of change is 10 penguins per, per day from 1998 to 2004. Writing a sentence that gives you the, or gives the person who's looking at your answer, the actual answer to the question. Next thing we're going to do is find the rate of change between these two points. And of course, in order to find the rate of change between those two points, we're going to be using the slope formula, which is here. Go ahead and try that out on your own, pause the video, and then come back to see if you got it right. Okay, first and foremost, I am going to label my points. I have x1, y1 as 3, 4, and x2, y2 as negative 3, negative 7. That's just what they, uh, what they presented to me. It doesn't really matter where they are on the graph. It just matters this is the first point, this is the second point. Now I'm going to write down my slope formula, which is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And now I'm going to substitute in the values of y2, x2, y1, and x1. So it should be you know, negative 7 minus 4 divided by negative 3 minus 3. What I'm going to do is substitute, oh, I'm sorry, simplify the top and bottom. Negative 7 minus 4 gives us negative 11, and negative 3 minus 3, that's just negative 6. I'm always going to try to simplify as much as I can. It looks like there's no common factors between 11 and 6, so I can't simplify the numbers. However, they're both negative, so a negative divided by a negative does give me a positive. So my correct and complete answer is going to be 11 over 6. Right, moving on to the first uh, model example here. Ty was tracking his progress below during his track workout here. His sprinting record is shown here. Time is recorded in seconds, so after 10 seconds, he ran 50. It says the distance is recorded in meters, 50 meters. And then after 60 seconds, he ran 300 meters. So the question for letter A is what variables are being compared? The variables that we're talking about here are the things that are changing, right? The things that uh, are not a set in stone quantity. And it looks like time is changing, and it also looks like distance is changing. I'm also going to write down the units. Time is in seconds, and distance is in meters. I'm going to go one better than that. I know that as time goes on, uh, time's distance is getting farther and farther away from the starting point. So I know that time is the thing that's moving independently, and distance is the dependent variable. Distance is a thing that it's changing because time is going on. So I'm going to rename uh, time in seconds and distance in meters as x and y, respectively. Another way that I could uh, figure that out is that time is given to me in the first column here and distance is in the second column, which usually means uh, time, the first column is going to be x, and distance, the second column, is going to be y. The next question asks, in this problem, what is Ty's rate of change between 10 and 50 seconds? So rate of change, we know that is the slope. And at 10 seconds, his distance is 50. 
and at 50 seconds, his distance is 250. So as the time changed from 10 to 50, the distance changed from 50 to 250, which means we're going to have to turn these, um, these rows in the table into ordered pairs. And then once we have them as ordered pairs, like they were up here, we can use the slope formula to find the slope between them. Okay, now they're ordered pairs. Now let's label them that we la like we labeled the previous problem uh, from the notes. So now that my points are labeled, I should be able to uh, put these points into my slope formula, my rate of change formula. And once we substituted and simplified and then simplified again, we got five. So the slope in this particular case is five. Um, once we're done with finding the slope, we have to include units in context. So let's do some context. That's actually the question, uh, letter C here. What is the meaning of the rate of change in the context of the problem? Well, we know five is the number. Let's look at the units. Uh, well, the units of time is seconds and the units of distance is meters. So it's five Ys every X. In other words, five meters every second. So I'm gonna write down five meters per second. In other words, in the context of the problem, between 10 and 50 seconds, between uh, 10 seconds and 50 seconds, Ty ran five meters per second. So what I want for my sentence is to actually write all of that down in the same, uh, you know, in the same sentence. So here's how it looks. Notice I included the interval that they asked me about in the problem between 10 and 50 seconds. And I included the fact that the person ran five meters per second, which is the number that we found from the slope and also the units that we found from our word problem. Okay, so that's the sort of thing that I need you to be able to do. Interval, number, units of, in question. The check for understanding, number one, is going to be done in class. So let's move on to the model example number two. The graph on the right shows John travel, uh, John's travel on his road trip. We're supposed to compute the average rate of change between the first hour and the 10th hour. And we're supposed to also write a full sentence with the rate of change included, similar to what we just did uh, for the previous problem. Okay, so pause the video, try this one out, and then come back to see if you got it right. So we're supposed to compute the average rate of change, which is the slope between the first and 10th hour. Here's the first hour and here's the 10th hour. It looks like the time is in hours and the distance is in miles this time. Um, so what I'm going to do for a graph is I'm going to try to count it out a little bit. I'm going to try to use my rise over run. As you know, slope is equal to rise over run. So if it is rise over run, that means we should be able to figure out how much we rise and how much we run in order to get from this point to this point. From this point, which is 1 comma 40, 40 is the y value. That's where we are horizontally right now. I'm sorry, that's where we are vertically right now. So this value right here should be 40. That means I'm having to rise all the way up to here. This is the point where I'm at the same level as this 390. So this point here should be 390. And now I can also find out the run by going from this point, this horizontal point, which is, I'm at, oh, let's use a different color here. Uh, I am at one, the X value of one. I'm going across, I'm running to the right until I get to the second point, the point that they ask about. This is 10 comma 390, so the X value is 10. That means this value here is going to be at 10. Typically, uh, typically for rise over run, we count boxes, but um, there are no boxes here, so we can figure it out just by the Y values. From 390 to 40, or in other words, really, I guess from 40 to 390, we went upwards by 350. That's the difference between 390 and 40. So we went upwards by about 350 units. And then that is the rise. And then the run is going to be from 1 to 10. I increased by 9. So my rise is 350, and my run is 9, which means if I'm trying to find the rate of change, the slope, I use rise of 350, run of 9. I put this into my calculator and I tried to uh, find, you know, what 350 divided by 9 is, but it gave me a uh, ongoing repeating decimal. So I'm just going to leave this as 350 over 9. It can't be reduced, so 350 over 9 is okay. Now let's try to talk about what the rate of change is in terms of units. You know that the rate of change is the uh, y's per x's, so it is distance traveled in miles, so it's miles per 
the x is hours. So 350 over 9 miles per hour. Now, last but not least, we have to write out our sentence that includes everything from the context, from the story, uh, and also the slope and its units. So, uh, on John's road trip, between the first and the tenth hour, his rate of change was 350 over 9 miles per hour. So, that's how it's supposed to sound. Here's how it looks. Okay, not bad. Uh, remember, the check for understanding number two is going to be your responsibility, not mine. So, let's do one more model example. In this model example, it talks about an astronaut dropping a rock off the edge of a cliff on the moon. Uh, distance in meters, the rock travels after t seconds, so it's giving us meters and seconds. Those are the units. can be modeled by the function d of t is equal to 0 0.8 t squared. What's the average speed? Okay, average speed, it's looking for the slope of the rock between 5 and 10 seconds after it was dropped. Okay, so it's talking about between 5 and 10 seconds. That means we have to figure out how far it has traveled in five seconds and how far it has traveled in 10 seconds. In the previous examples, we were able to look at a graph or look at a table to figure that out. But in this particular case, we don't have a graph or a table. We just have the equation. However, we can still use the equation to figure out how far it dropped by saying, well, if t is 5, substitute t in as 5. If t is 10, substitute in t as 10. Uh, and then figure out what the distances are at those particular times. That's how we're going to find our points. So pause the video, try this one out, and then come back to see if you got it right. Okay, so let's figure out how many meters this rock is at five seconds. At t equals five seconds, we write out the formula, and as you remember from the functions unit, we take that input and we put it into the parentheses here, and we also put it into the actual function or equation. We put this part into the calculator and press enter. That gives us 20. So that means at five seconds, the object was at 20 feet. That means we can turn this into an ordered pair of five comma 20. Input five, output 20. Now let's figure out where it was at t equals 10 seconds. When we substitute in t equals 10 to our function, we got uh, 10 squared times 0 0.8, which is 80, meaning our second point, our second ordered pair is 10 comma 80. So now that we have these two points, we can do the same exact procedure as before. We can fill in our formula or try to figure out the change in y over the change in x to find the slope. Label the first point as x1, y1, the second point as x2, y2, and then I'll put them into my formula for slope. Here's how it looks. That should be 80 divided by 20 over 10, uh, 80 minus 20 rather, divided by 10 minus 5. And that should simplify out to 60 over 5. And we know that 60 divided by 5 is the same as 12. Sorry, it should be in green. Okay, so the solution here is that the slope is 12. Remember, we're talking about units as well, but it told us the units here in meters per second. So let's write out our sentence. So here we included the interval from 5 to 10 seconds. The rock's average speed was 12 meters per second, right? It's 12 y's per x. And the correct answer here then must be 12. Great. Uh, there are more questions here, check for, checks for understanding, but I don't want to do those now. I want you to do those uh, in class. So that is the end of the video. So this was the sixth uh, unit, uh, linear applications, the second lesson, which is on real world slopes. All right, folks, good luck studying.